Today is a good day, because what we believe we have is the final piece of the puzzle. We learned a lesson from the prior video and won't mention the words free energy or a solution to the world's energy problems anymore. We are merely reporting data while trying to deal with the philosophical issues. We ask that viewers postpone any judgment for a week or so until they see the next video. This device has two cogging points and we merely ask that the skeptics postpone their judgments until the next video which will essentially have no cogging points. At the two cogging points magnets are not aligned. I repeat, magnets are not aligned. The only net torque that we can expect to harvest is the torque required to realign the magnets. We are now measuring the realignment torque. So here we go. This 200 gram weight is about half the weight required for realignment. The moment arm is 155 millimeters. We added weights to the pivot point until the magnets were aligned. 400 grams at 155 millimeters resolves to 0.6 newton meters of torque, which is less than 10% of the dreaded cogging torque. The motion is small and unimpressive until you understand that it is 25% of the width of the magnets. The overwhelming cogging torque is the only thing that prevents this device from spinning. Typical motors use the positive cogging torque forces and switch off the negative cogging forces. Magnetic energy lost equals mechanical work output. You may notice that the magnetic blocks are skewed. While the magnet offset is significant, never before achieved, the skewing is more significant. Adjusted to these points, essentially all of the parasitic cogging can be easily eliminated by fully populating the loop with magnets in line with homopolar theories. The torque data teaches us what is required to make a practical motor. 0.6 newton meters of torque is generated with magnets having 5.6 square centimeters of engagement. A 1 kW motor produces about 3 newton meters of torque, so we are 20% of the way there. This package can support 8 times the number of magnets, so it has the potential to produce more than 1 kW. A 10 kW motor only needs to be double this diameter. Life is good. And I am practicing on the philosophical issues with these statements. Conservation of energy is an absolutely valid scientific law, as is the thermodynamic law that says heat can only travel from a hot source to a cold sink. Adding evaporation to the picture seemingly violates the thermodynamic law in the case of air conditioning and refrigeration but it does not. We are doing the same thing with magnetism. Magnetic energy is absolutely conserved in every way, form, and manner. However, conservation of energy can be uselessly violated with gyroscopes. Torque required to overcome gyroscopic forces undeniably destroys energy, but it is incapable of producing a microwatt of energy because gyroscopic torque is on an axis perpendicular to the spin axis. We are essentially doing the same thing. Torque is produced on a perpendicular axis. The end result is not an energy converting motor, but a motor producing only torque independent of speed. This technology might be considered to be using a loophole just like in the thermodynamic law. Using the loophole sacrifices the enormous benefits of inherent speed control with a perpendicular reaction. 
energy benefits might already outweigh the speed control benefits. We are most likely to be posting a, a video that you're all waiting for in this venue within a few days.